Hi, uh, I'm Renee Mohammed, and with me is Ron Coleman and Karen Taylor from the from Intervoice, the Hearing Voices Network, and uh, they've graciously agreed to be interviewed with us. So, uh, just a few quick questions. Can you tell us a little bit about the Hearing Voices Networks? Yeah, the the Hearing Voices Network was really established. Um, uh, by um, a patient, Marius Rom, who was a psychiatrist, a patient we call Patsy Hag, and uh, Marius's partner in crime, I guess, uh, Sandra, Sandra Escher. And um, it came about because Patsy asked a question of Marius, and the question was really simple. She said, Marius, why is it okay for you to go to church and pray to God? and that's fine, and yet when I hear God's voice, people want to lock me up. And uh, Marius sort of thought about this, started really looking at um, voice hearing, and brought voice hearers together, and just let them talk to each other. Yeah. And what he was astonished by was that these people would come together talk about their voices and understand each other. Now he didn't understand it and he was very open about the fact that he didn't understand half of what was going on, but it had a positive effect on people that had voices. Mm -hmm. So he decided to explore that further and started his research uh, into uh, voice hearing and the experience of voice hearing. At the same time, um, when Marius finished his first piece of research, he met um, a guy called Paul Baker in Italy, where Marius was presenting. And uh, Paul was challenged to take it back to the UK and see if the same thing happened. And I, I guess that was the real beginnings of the, of the Hearing Voices movement. Uh, in the UK, it grew really quickly uh, mm -hmm. as... Uh, an alternative, uh, and I think part of that was that, that in the UK we, we were much more uh, into the survivor movement and into the politics of madness uh, in a funny sort of way, and so it, the UK was just right to, um, to, for the Hearing Voices Network to thrive and grow, and what we do is we, I guess, it's a self-help movement. We discuss um, not just voices, but we discuss um, our response to voices, to visions, to all sort of extreme states, uh, but in a very self-help uh, context. So uh, in one sense, uh, Intervoice, which came from the Hearing Voices Network, it takes that a bit further because it, the intervoice is the real alliance between professionals, voice hearers and families. Yeah. So we see an intervoice not just the components of self-help being explored, but also the, the way workers can work differently with voice hearers and the way family members can engage with voice hearers. So in a sense, Intervoice was a natural development from the beginnings of the Hearing Voices Network. Okay. So, yeah. Cool. And um, do you have any tips or suggestions for people who are seeking to live well while they're hearing voices? Yeah, I, I guess my, my big thing for, for people at the beginning of their journey is to recognize that there are, as Rom and Escher pointed out, three phases of mm -hmm. voice hearing. Mm -hmm. The startling phase where we're very scared of what's happening, uh, the organisational phase where we're putting it into a framework and trying to understand it, and then the third phase where we go into, um, and Marius calls it stabilisation, but where we, we live with our voices and get on with our lives. And I still believe that one of the best places of learning a lot of those things is in a self-help group. Okay. And so I would encourage people to 
either form self-helps or groups or join Ian Boyce's groups. Yeah, I'd also say um, that if you have got a helpful worker, mm -hmm. then talk to them about your voices, you know, um, get them to help you explore the voices. I think there are other things as well that are important is um, get on and have a life. Yeah. You know, go and do social things, don't let the voices get in the way of that. Um, uh, uh, we learned some really interesting things about food on Monday. Look at your diet. Make sure your diet is a healthy diet. Do all the things that all of us do to try and keep uh, well-being. Right. Great. Yeah. And uh, any tips or suggestions for people who are supporting people who hear voices? Um, yes. Uh, be very positive. Uh, inspire hope. Um, believe in the person, mm -hmm. uh, recognise that the voices have a reality, mm -hmm. um, support the person to explore, it's, it's, support the person to express their emotions mm -hmm. and to understand their emotions, um, help the person explore their story and if, if that's relevant to, to their voice hearing experience. Um, work within the person's framework, you know, the, the context which the, the person believes their voices, you know, the, 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 what their voices are about. Could you explain that piece a um, more? Yeah, if, if a person um, uh, believes that um, their voices are there because they're telepathic, it's no point arguing and saying, no, telepathy is a, a maladaptive coping strategy. Because yeah. all you're going to do is get into um, disagreement with each other. Mm -hmm. uh, the trust will disappear um, and you won't be able to work together. So stay within that framework. Read up on, on psychic you know, stuff and, yeah. uh, you know, and, and learn, learn the language and understand where the person's coming from mm -hmm. uh, and help them explore within the framework uh, their experience of voice hearing. Okay. Um, once you've done that, and you know maybe you've looked at story and you can see that there are some connections or, or possible connections um ask the person do they think there are any connections um, so you can gently challenge that way but if they don't then that's fine mm -hmm. uh, and i guess there's a list of don'ts mm. okay don't patronize voice hearers yeah mm -hmm. uh voice hearers see through that very quickly uh, don't lie to us, mm -hmm. um, don't deny our experience. Um, don't over medicate us. Don't over medicate. <laughs> yeah. um, and those are a real number of don'ts that I think is really important. Do accept the reality. Yeah. It's for, I think for voice hearers, one of the most important things. Because when somebody acknowledges the reality of your experience, then you can talk about that reality. To help the person dialogue with their voices. Um, yeah, I'll do another. Okay, great. Yeah, I think I saw that in action in one of your workshops where you would suggest they say something to the voice and they would tell you how the voice responded mm -hmm. and it would go back and forth. Yeah. Okay, so um, any final thoughts? Um, as a worker, uh, to other workers, I would really encourage you to um, encourage your voice hearers to go to self-help groups. Um, it is a, a really good way for that person to be able to explore their experience safely uh, and to form a social network. Because right. um, it's not all about doom and gloom and uh, you know talking about voices. A lot of the groups are fun, they do social things together and that, that's important too. Um, and yeah, just be there for the person. Walk the journey with them. And for voice ears are thinking about it, take a chance. Mm -hmm. you, know, you know, the one thing I am clear about is the voices group won't hurt you. What have you got to lose? Yeah, that's yeah. it. That's really important. Great. Well, thank you so much. Uh, <coughs>